Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Nikon DF. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. The functions and features of the DF that we cover are designed to give you a solid working knowledge of your camera. It's really not possible to cover every configuration on your camera, but we will provide you a very solid foundation to build your digital photography skills on. With this new information, you'll be able to improve your ability to capture pictures in a variety of shooting settings. Your DF has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin by taking a closer look at many of the camera's features. First, there is the power switch and shutter release button. To take a picture, simply press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment. Allow the camera to focus and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the mode dial. To select a shooting mode, lift and rotate the dial. You can choose from P or programmed auto, S or shutter priority, A or aperture priority, and M or manual. This is the LCD illuminator button. Pressing this button will illuminate the control panel. This is the control panel where you can view and change many of the camera's important settings. This is the release mode dial. To select a release mode, simply rotate the lever on the dial. You can choose from single frame, continuous low speed, continuous high speed, quiet, self timer, and mirror up. This is the shutter speed dial, which will allow you to choose from a variety of shutter speed options. This is the shutter speed dial lock release. When the shutter speed dial is set to one third step, X or flash sync or T or time, the shutter speed dial will lock. To set a different shutter speed, press and hold the lock release while rotating the shutter speed dial. Here is the accessory shoe, which will allow you to use an optional flash with your camera. This is the exposure compensation dial and lock release. To select an exposure compensation setting, press and hold the lock release while rotating the exposure compensation dial. When the camera is set to the programmed auto, shutter priority, or aperture priority modes, you can adjust the overall brightness of the image with exposure compensation. Values with a plus sign will make the image brighter, and values with a minus sign will make the image darker. Below the exposure compensation dial, there is the ISO dial. To select an ISO setting, press and hold the ISO dial lock release while rotating the ISO dial. There are options for ISO settings ranging from 100 to 12,800, as well as several high and low settings. On this side of the camera, you'll find the connector covers, where you can use connectors to connect the camera to other devices. Here you'll find the USB connector, which will allow you to connect the camera to a computer or compatible printer. The mini HDMI connector, which will allow you to connect the camera to an HD television. This is the accessory terminal, which will allow you to use optional remote cords and GPS units with your camera. This is the self timer lamp, and this is the bracket button. To set the number of frames to be bracketed, press and hold the bracket button while rotating the main command dial. To set the exposure increment, press and hold this button while rotating the sub command dial. This is the flash sync terminal, which will allow you to connect a flash sync cable to the camera. This is the lens release button. To remove a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. To attach a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off. Hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this. Align the lens's index with the camera's index. Then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. 
Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. This is the AF mode button and the focus mode selector. To select an AF mode, make sure that the focus mode selector is set to AF, and then press and hold the AF mode button while rotating the main command dial. To select an AF area mode, press and hold the AF mode button while rotating the sub command dial. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. This is the sub command dial which will allow you to choose the aperture setting as well as many other camera settings. This is the preview button. You can use this button to preview the effects of the aperture setting you have selected. Press and hold the button while looking through the viewfinder to see what the depth of field will look like in your final image. This is the function button. You can use the custom setting menu to customize this button to provide quick access to many of the camera's settings. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the large LCD monitor. This monitor serves several purposes. First, it displays images that have been taken. Using the camera's multi-selector, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. Second, when the info button is pressed, the LCD monitor provides fast and easy access to several of the camera's settings in the information display. Third, when the menu button is pressed, the LCD monitor displays the camera's menu system, where you can change many important settings in the camera. Finally, when the live view button is pressed, the LCD screen provides a live view of the scene. Directly above the LCD monitor is the viewfinder, where you can see camera settings when you're taking pictures. Before you start taking pictures, you'll want to focus the viewfinder. To do this, use the diopter adjustment control located to the right of the eye cup. Gently rotate the control until the automatic focus points in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. At the bottom of the viewfinder display, you can see the focus indicator, the metering mode, the shooting mode, the shutter speed, the aperture setting, the exposure meter, and the number of shots remaining before the memory buffer fills. Over the scene, you will see the camera's focus points. When the shutter button is pressed halfway to focus, the area where the focus points blink in red will be in focus. This is the AEAF lock button. When the shutter button is pressed and held halfway down, you can press the AEAF lock button to lock the focus and exposure while you recompose the image. This is the AF on button, which will allow you to focus the image in the same way as pressing the shutter button halfway. This is the main command dial which will allow you to adjust the exposure and other camera settings. This is the metering selector. Rotating this selector will allow you to choose the camera's metering mode. You can choose from center weighted, matrix, and spot metering. As we've discussed, this is the multi-selector. It's used for navigating the menu system, scrolling through images in playback, and accessing information on the information display. You can press the OK button or the right side of the multi-selector to confirm selections in the menu system. This is the focus selector lock. When it's set on L or lock, the focus point is locked and cannot be changed with the multi-selector. This is the live view button. Pressing this button will activate the camera's live view. To end live view, simply press the button again. This is the info button. Pressing this button will activate the information display. This is the delete button, which will allow you to remove images from the memory card. This is the playback button. Pressing this button will allow you to view images on the LCD monitor. This is the menu button, which provides access to the camera's menu system. This button has three functions. First, it is the protect button. Pressing this button while in the camera's playback mode will protect the displayed image from accidental deletion. Second, this button is the help button. Whenever there is a question mark icon displayed at the bottom of the LCD, pressing this button will display a description of the currently selected option. Finally, this button is the white balance button. You can press and hold this button while rotating the main command dial to select the white balance setting. This button has two functions. First, it is the playback zoom in button. 
When you're viewing an image in playback mode, you can press this button once or multiple times to zoom in and see detail areas of the image. You can use the multi-selector to scroll to other areas of the frame. This button also serves as the quality button, which will provide fast and easy access to image quality settings in the camera's shooting modes. Press and hold this button while rotating the main command dial to select the image quality. Press and hold this button while rotating the sub-command dial to select the image size. This button has two functions. First, it is the playback zoom out thumbnail button. When you're viewing a zoomed image in playback, you can press this button once or multiple times to zoom out. In regular playback, you can press this button to see a thumbnail view of the images on the memory card. This button also serves as the flash mode flash compensation button when an optional flash is attached to the camera. This is the I button. In the camera shooting modes, pressing this button will allow you to make adjustments to the options in the information display. In the playback mode, pressing the I button will allow you to edit images in camera with the retouch menu options. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the camera. This is the tripod socket. This is the battery compartment and the SD card slot cover. When you're inserting a memory card, you'll want to make sure that the camera is powered off and that the manufacturer's logo is facing the back of the camera. Simply insert the card until it clicks into place. To remove a memory card, simply press the card until it ejects you'll want to make sure that the compartment cover is closed and latched properly when you're finished. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. Also, keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't reformat your card unless you have already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format a memory card, press the menu button and use the camera's multi-selector to navigate to the setup menu, indicated by a wrench icon. Use the multi-selector to select the format memory card option. Select yes and press OK. Your DF has a variety of image area, quality, and size settings that will allow you to capture images with resolution, file format, and compression that you need for your scenario. Before you set the image quality and image size, you'll probably want to familiarize yourself with the image area options on the DF. There are several options that will accommodate both FX and DX lenses. To select the image area, enter the camera's shooting menu and select the image area option. There are two menu items. The first menu item, choose image area, is where you can choose the image area that you'd like. The first image area option is FX 36 by 24. This is the camera's full frame option and will allow you to use the full 36 by 24 millimeter area of the image sensor. This image area is recommended for scenarios like large group portraits and landscape photos that will be printed at large sizes. The DX 24 by 16 option is for use with DX lenses and will allow you to use a 24 by 16 millimeter area of the image sensor at the center. The other option in the image area menu is Auto DX Crop. When this option is enabled, the camera will automatically select the DX Crop image area when a DX lens is attached to the camera. Now that we've discussed the image area options, let's take a moment to talk about the camera's image quality options. Your Nikon DF can record image files in three different image quality settings or file types, RAW, TIFF, and JPEG. First, there is the RAW or NEF setting. RAW files are not actually image files. They're actually the RAW data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. This means that raw files must be processed on the computer before they're printed. 
Next, raw file sizes are considerably larger than JPEG files, but smaller than TIFF files. Raw files have a much broader range of tones, shadow and highlight areas have more detail than other image files, and you can extensively edit raw files without losing image data. The next image quality setting on the DF is TIFF. TIFF is a standard uncompressed file format that is supported by many types of image editing software. TIFF files are recorded with 8-bit RGB color. Because TIFF files are uncompressed, their file sizes are larger than RAW files and much larger than JPEG files. The last image quality setting on the DF is JPEG. JPEG files are a standard compressed file format that is supported by any image software. Because JPEG files are compressed, the file sizes are very small compared to RAW files, but they also have a much narrower range of tones and will lose some image data each time that they're saved. Let's take a look at how to select the image quality settings on the DF. The fastest method is to simply press and hold the quality button while rotating the main command dial. You can see the selected image quality setting on the information display as well as the approximate number of images that you can record on the memory card with that setting. The other method for selecting the image quality is through the menu system. Enter the camera's shooting menu and select image quality. Here you can choose from a variety of options. Let's start at the bottom of the list and look at the JPEG options. There are three different JPEG options, including Fine, Normal, and Basic. The JPEG quality options determine how much compression is used when the JPEG file is saved to the memory card. Images with a Fine setting will have the least amount of compression, images with a Normal setting will have moderate compression, and images with a Basic setting will have the most compression. Above the JPEG settings, there is the TIFF setting. And above that, you will see the RAW options. You can choose to have the camera record only one RAW file each time a picture is taken, or you can choose to have the camera record one RAW file and one JPEG file each time a picture is taken. With the RAW plus JPEG options, you can choose the level of JPEG compression. Now let's talk about the image size options, which determine how many megapixels you'd like the camera to use when recording images. The image size options on the DF will vary depending on the image area you have selected. Let's discuss the image size options when the camera is set to the FX or full frame format. Setting the image size is done in a similar way as selecting the image quality. Simply press and hold the quality button while rotating the sub command dial. You can also select the image size using the menu system. In the shooting menu, select image size. Here you can see that there are three options, large, medium, and small. The large option will use all 16 megapixels, the medium option will use 9 megapixels, and the small option will use 4 megapixels. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor or film. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow, mid-tone, and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are underexposed. The camera measures light to determine proper exposure with the metering modes. The Nikon DF has three metering modes. To select a metering mode, simply rotate the metering selector on the back of the camera. First, let's discuss the matrix metering mode. This is a great general use metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. When this mode is selected, the camera will divide the scene into zones. Then the camera measures the shadows and the highlights in each zone and averages all of the zones. Then the camera uses that average to set the exposure automatically to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you may want to use a different metering mode. Next, there is center-weighted metering. Center-weighted metering functions much like matrix metering, with zones being evaluated and averaged. But with center-weighted metering, the zones that are in the center area of the frame are given the greatest weight. 
The zones that are outside of the center area of the frame are taken into account as well, but these zones are given much less priority when determining the exposure. Center weighted metering is a classic mode used for portraits. The last metering mode is spot metering. Spot metering uses only 1.5% of the frame to determine proper exposure. When spot metering is used on the DF, the area that is used to meter exposure is the center of the selected focus point. This feature on the DF makes it easier to meter off-center subjects. Spot metering is a great mode to use when there is a lot of contrast between the background and the subject, when the background is either very bright or very dark. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, let's talk a little about the shooting modes on your DF. Your camera's shooting modes allow you to take creative control over your camera settings like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, flash, as well as a variety of other settings. To select a shooting mode, lift and rotate the mode dial. The first mode is called Programmed Auto, and it's represented with a P on the mode dial. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. But you can change the aperture and shutter speed combinations to suit your needs. To operate in this mode, lift and rotate the mode dial to select P. You can monitor the aperture and exposure settings in the viewfinder and on the information display. Press and hold the shutter button halfway down to focus, and then press the shutter button all the way down to take the picture. You may find that the shutter speed is too slow for what you're photographing, or that the aperture does not give you the depth of field that you're looking for. If you'd like to change the camera's shutter speed and aperture combination, simply rotate the main command dial. Rotate the command dial to the right for larger aperture openings and fast shutter speeds, and rotate the command dial to the left for small aperture openings and slow shutter speeds. The next shooting mode is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring the motion of a subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select a proper aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, set the mode dial to S. Press the shutter button halfway down to activate the viewfinder and rotate the shutter speed dial to select the shutter speed. The shutter speed is displayed on the information display. The shutter speed dial has shutter speeds that range from very slow, four full seconds, to very fast, one four thousandth of a second. When you're selecting any one of these settings, you can freely rotate the shutter speed dial without pressing the lock release. There are also four other shutter speed options on the dial. When any of these options are selected, you will need to press and hold the lock release to rotate the dial. First, there is the one-third step option. When the shooting mode is set to either shutter priority or manual, you can use the one-third step option to adjust the shutter speed in one-third step increments using the main command dial. The next setting on the shutter speed dial is X, or flash sync. Use this setting when you're using an optional flash unit. Next, there is the T or time setting. With the time setting, you can press the shutter button or use an optional remote to begin the exposure and the shutter will stay open for 30 minutes or until the shutter button or remote shutter button is pressed again. The last option on the shutter speed dial is the B or bulb option. With this bulb setting, the shutter will stay open the whole time that the shutter button or remote shutter button is held down. The next shooting mode is the A or Aperture Priority Mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. When everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. 
When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, set the mode dial to A, rotate the sub-command dial to select an aperture value as you watch the display on the control panel, through the viewfinder, or on the information display. Once you have made your selection, press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The last shooting mode is the manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, set the mode dial to M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the main command dial. To set the aperture, rotate the sub command dial. You can watch the exposure scale on the control panel, information display, or through the viewfinder. When the exposure level indicator is near the center of the scale, the image should be properly exposed. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed and press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO setting controls the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity, or you can set it manually. To set the ISO on the DF, press and hold the lock release while rotating the ISO sensitivity dial. You can select ISOs ranging from 100 to 12,800, as well as low and high settings for special shooting situations. The low settings are the equivalent of ISOs 80 to 50. The high settings are the equivalent of ISOs 16,000 to 204,800. The Nikon DF also has an auto ISO option which will automatically adjust the ISO setting when good exposure cannot be achieved using the ISO setting that has been selected on the ISO dial. One of the great things about the auto ISO on this camera is that it works in conjunction with the selected minimum shutter speed that you can set according to your scenario. To activate the auto ISO option, enter the camera's shooting menu and select auto ISO sensitivity control. First, you can set the auto ISO to on or off. Next, you can select the maximum ISO sensitivity. If you would like to make sure that the camera does not use any ISO setting higher than ISO 1600, for example, simply select 1600. Now you can set the minimum shutter speed. You can select auto or you can choose any other shutter speed you'd like. This setting will set the slowest shutter speed that the camera will use. If the shutter speed drops to slower than what you have selected, the camera will increase the ISO to keep the shutter speed at the minimum that you have selected. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed to a higher number for low light, a faster shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. The full frame image sensor on your camera is very powerful. It will allow you to use very high ISO settings and still get great images. Keep in mind, however, that some very high ISO settings will introduce digital noise or grain into your images. You want to experiment with the camera's ISO settings to become familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade, on an overcast day, or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the camera's release modes. The release modes determine how many times the shutter releases when you press the shutter button. The DF has single frame, continuous low speed, continuous high speed, quiet, 
self timer, and mirror up. To set the release mode, simply rotate the release mode dial. In single frame release mode, one picture will be taken when you press the shutter button completely. This is a good mode for stationary subjects. The continuous low speed release mode will record up to five frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. You can change the maximum frames per second for this release mode in the camera's custom settings menu. The continuous high speed release mode will record up to six frames per second while the shutter button is pressed down completely. The quiet shutter release mode is like the single frame release mode, except that it does not beep when focus is achieved. This mode keeps sound to a minimum in quiet surroundings. The self timer mode takes the picture 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. Use this mode for self portraits or with a tripod to reduce camera shake at very slow shutter speeds. You can change the self timer delay in the camera's custom settings menu. There are options for 2, 5, 10, and 20 seconds. The last release mode, the mirror up mode, is great to use to minimize blur that can be caused by the shake of the mirror moving while the shutter is open. To use the mirror up mode, make sure that it is selected on the release mode dial. Next, frame the image and set the focus using the shutter button. Then, press the shutter button completely to raise the mirror. Now, simply press the shutter button again to take the picture. To minimize camera shake, press the button smoothly. The mirror will lower automatically when shooting ends. The Nikon DF has a great feature that will allow you to capture great photos using the LCD monitor instead of the viewfinder. Let's discuss the camera's live view mode. To shoot in live view, press the live view button. The live view scene will be displayed on the LCD monitor. Please note that it is important to avoid directing the camera's lens toward the sun in live view, as this can seriously damage the camera's internal components. Next, you'll need to choose the camera's AF mode as well as the AF area mode. To choose the AF mode, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the main command dial. In live view, you can choose from AFS or single servo AF and AFF or full time servo AF. The AFS or single servo AF focus mode is best suited for stationary subjects. The focus will be locked using the selected focus point when the shutter button is pressed halfway. Use this mode when you're photographing objects or stationary people. The other autofocus mode that is available in live view is AFF or full time servo. This is a great mode to use for moving subjects. Using the selected focus point, the camera will focus continually even without the shutter button being pressed. Focus will be locked when the AF on button is pressed or when the shutter button is pressed halfway. After you've selected the autofocus mode, you'll need to choose the autofocus area mode. To do this, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the sub command dial. In live view, there are four different AF area modes. Face priority, wide area, normal area, and subject tracking. The AF area modes determine how the camera chooses the focus point or area to use when auto-focusing. For the wide, normal, and subject tracking AF area modes, use the multi-selector to move the focus point to the desired area of the frame. You can press the OK button to quickly place the focus point in the center of the frame. If you select face priority, the camera will automatically find and focus on faces in the frame. Wide area is best suited for photographing landscapes and other non-portrait subjects. Use normal area when you want to pinpoint focus on a specific part of the frame. Using a tripod will help make sure that focus stays exactly where you want it. This is a great mode to use when you're photographing small subjects. The last AF area mode is subject tracking. This mode is great for moving subjects. You'll need to position the focus point and press the OK button. This will tell the camera to track the subject in the focus point as it moves across the frame. To end subject tracking, press the OK button again. 
In all of the AF modes and AF area modes, the focus point will blink while the camera is focusing. When focus has been achieved, the focus point will stop blinking. If the camera cannot focus, the focus point will blink in red. In the live view screen, several important shooting settings are displayed on the screen. Here you'll see the metering mode, the shooting mode, the shutter speed, the aperture and ISO. This is the number of shots remaining. At the top of the screen, you'll see the focus mode, the focus area mode, the active delighting setting, the picture control, the white balance setting, the image size and image quality settings, and the FX or DX indicator. To hide many of these icons, press the info button. To bring up a 16 cell framing grid, press the info button again. Pressing the info button again will display a 9 cell framing grid. Pressing the info button again will display the camera's virtual horizon, which will indicate when the camera is level horizontally and vertically, and in the forward and backward positions. Pressing the info button again will display the 16-9 aspect ratio indicator. And pressing the info button again will display the 1 to 1 aspect ratio indicator. In Live View, you can make adjustments to several camera settings by pressing the I button. You can change the image quality, the image size, the picture control, the active delighting setting, and the monitor brightness. To make adjustments to the monitor brightness, simply press OK and then use the up and down arrows on the multi-selector to make adjustments. Note that the monitor brightness adjustment will not affect the exposure of the final image. The Nikon DF has a large LCD monitor where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and access the information display. There are many options available for previewing images, and many of the camera's settings can easily be accessed through the information display. Let's discuss how to use these camera features. For basic playback of your images on the camera's LCD monitor, simply press the playback button. Then you can use the multi-selector to scroll through the images. If you have a large number of images recorded on the memory card, you may find that it's faster to find the photos that you would like to view if you display multiple photos on the screen at once. To do this, simply press the zoom out button. Pressing the zoom out button once will display four images on the LCD monitor. Pressing the zoom out button twice will display nine images. Pressing the zoom out button a third time will display 72 images. And pressing the zoom out button a fourth time will display images in a calendar view. From any of the thumbnail playback displays, you can use the multi-selector to scroll through the images and press the OK button for a full screen display of the image you'd like to view. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the zoom in button once or multiple times to see the desired level of detail in the photo. Then you can use the multi-selector to scroll top to bottom and side to side on the photo. As you're scrolling through photos in the camera's playback, you may find some photos that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect an image, simply press the Protect button. A small key icon will appear on the LCD to indicate that the image is protected. Simply press the Protect button again to unprotect the image. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the delete button. When the dialog appears, press the delete button again and the image will be removed from the memory card. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. There are several different playback screens and options on the DF. By default, not all of the screen options are enabled. To enable the other screen options, press the menu button and navigate to the playback menu. Select playback display options. Highlight the option you would like to enable and then press the right side of the multi-selector to select it. Do this for each option you would like to enable. When you've made your selections, scroll back to done and press OK. Let's take a look at the first and default playback screen. This screen shows some important information about the image. 
First, there is the folder name, the file name, image quality and size settings, the FX or DX indicator, and the date and time that the image was recorded. At the top right corner of the screen, the frame number out of the total number of images is displayed. To view additional playback displays, press the up or down arrow button on the multi-selector. Pressing the up arrow button will display a full frame image with no additional information. Pressing the up arrow again will display the overview playback display. In addition to the information that was shown in the default or file information playback display, there is a histogram of the image. The histogram gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of an image. If the histogram is shifted to the left side of the graph, the image will probably be dark or underexposed. If the histogram is shifted to the right side of the graph, the image will be too bright or overexposed. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph. The histogram will help you have a basic idea of the overall exposure of your image when you're outdoors in bright sunlight and the photos are difficult to see on the LCD monitor. This screen also shows the metering mode, the shooting mode, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, the focal length, the exposure compensation and flash compensation settings, the white balance setting, the color space, the picture control, and the active delighting setting. Pressing the up arrow again will display the first screen of the shooting data display. There are three screens in this display. Press the up arrow on the multi-selector to view the additional screens. The next playback display is the RGB histogram display. This screen shows a histogram for the whole image as well as a histogram for each of the red, green, and blue channels of the image. Here you can see the areas of any of the individual channels that are shifted to the left showing the dark tones in that channel or shifted to the right showing the lighter tones in that color channel. If any of the channels have distribution that is shifted too far to the right, that color channel will be oversaturated and show little or no detail. To see areas in each channel that have been clipped or have lost detail in that channel, Press and hold the thumbnail zoom out button and press the sides of the multi-selector. The areas that blink in black are the areas that have lost detail for that channel. Areas that blink in black when the top histogram is selected are areas that have lost detail in all color channels. The last screen available in the playback display is blinking highlights. This feature is useful for times when you may want to have the camera warn you if certain areas of your photo are overexposed. In this playback display, areas that are very overexposed and have lost detail and highlights will blink in black. In the playback mode, there are several useful and creative ways that you can process your images in camera. These are the retouch options and are accessed in the playback mode by pressing the I button. Let's discuss several of these options now. The first item in this menu is D-Lighting, which allows you to improve detail in highlight and shadow areas in an image. First, you'll need to select the amount of correction you'd like to apply. On the right side of the screen, a preview image is displayed as you scroll through the options. Choosing Low will improve some of the darkest shadow areas, Normal will brighten more of the shadow areas, and high will brighten most of the shadow areas in the image. After you've made your selection, press OK to save the image. The camera will make a copy of the image and save it to the memory card. Retouched images have the retouch icon displayed at the top of the image. The red eye correction feature will allow you to reduce the effect of red eye in images where the flash was used. Another useful feature is trim, where you can crop a photo in camera. Using the camera's zoom in and zoom out buttons, you can adjust the size of the crop, and rotating the main command dial will allow you to change the aspect ratio. You can also use the multi-selector to move the crop to your desired area of the frame. Finally, you can press OK to apply the crop and save the image as a separate file. 
Although photo editing software makes it fast and easy to convert your color images to black and white, your camera will do a great job with this task as well with the monochrome menu option. You can choose from black and white, sepia or brown tone, and cyanotype or blue tone. With both sepia and cyanotype, you can adjust the intensity of the color with the multi-selectors up and down arrows. In the filter effects section of the retouch menu, you can choose to apply one of seven filters to your image. The skylight filter will reduce the blue in the image. The warm filter will give the photo a warm red cast. The red, green, and blue intensifiers will enhance or intensify that specific color in the image. You can use the multi-selectors up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease the effect. The cross screen filter is a way to create starburst effects for the light sources in the image. There are several options for this filter. First, you can choose the number of points you'd like each starburst to have. Then you can choose the amount or brightness of the light sources that will be affected. You'll also need to choose the angle or length of the filter points. After your selections have been made, you can select confirm to see the effects of your changes. From here, you can make adjustments, or you can select Save to have a copy saved to the memory card. The last filter in Filter Effects is the Soft Filter, which will apply a soft photo effect to the image. You can use the multi-selector to choose the amount of softness that is applied, and press OK to save a copy of the image. You can use the Color Balance feature to adjust the overall color of the image. Use the multi-selector to place the indicator in the area of the color grid that you'd like, then press OK to save a copy of the image. The DF's NEF or RAW processing will make a JPEG copy of a RAW file and save it to the memory card. Here you can adjust several items, image quality and size, white balance, exposure compensation, picture control, high ISO noise reduction, color space, vignette control, and active delighting. After you have made the desired adjustments to each of these settings, highlight EXE and press OK to make a JPEG copy of the image. Another useful function in the retouch menu is the resize option, where you can create smaller copies of images. Then you'll want to choose the size of the image copy, options ranging between 3.5 megapixels and 0.3 megapixels are available. Select the size you'd like and select OK. Select Yes and select OK again to save a resized copy to your memory card. The camera's quick retouch option will create a copy of a selected image with greater contrast and enhanced colors. The straighten function can be used for any image, but it's especially helpful for landscapes and photos of architecture. Using this function is simple. Using the left and right arrow buttons on the multi-selector, align the horizon or any other reference line with the displayed grid. When you've adjusted the photo to your liking, press the OK button to have the camera save a copy of the image. The DF has a feature to help correct distortion. Depending on the lens and focal length that you use, you may find that some of your images have some distortion, a sometimes unwanted effect where the photo appears to be either bloated or pinched. Choose Auto to have the camera automatically correct distortion, and you'll only need to fine tune with the multi-selector. If you'd like to have complete control over the distortion control, select Manual. Use the multi-selector to adjust the distortion control to your liking, and press OK to have the camera save a copy of the image. If you don't own a fisheye lens, but you like that effect, you can recreate it with the fisheye feature. Simply select fisheye, and use the left and right arrows on the multi-selector to choose how much fisheye distortion you'd like to apply, and press OK to save a copy of the image. The color outline option will allow you to create an artistic effect with your photos. The color sketch option will allow you to create images that appear super realistic with a watercolor painting effect. Use the multi-selector to adjust the vividness and outlines Similar to distortion control, the perspective control feature will help to reduce the distortion that is often caused when photos of architecture are taken from a low viewpoint. You can use the up, down, left, and right arrows on the multi-selector to make adjustments to the perspective distortion. 
Again, simply press OK to save a copy of the adjusted image. The Miniature Effect feature will allow you to create images with similar effects to photos that are commonly created with tilt-shift lenses. Use the sides of the multi-selector to choose the size of the field of focus, and use the top and bottom of the multi-selector to choose the area of focus. You can press the Zoom Out button to change the direction of the field of focus. To see a preview of the effect, press and hold the Zoom In button. When you're satisfied with your changes, press the OK button to save the image to the memory card. The Selective Color effect allows you to create photos that have only selected colors shown in the image that is otherwise black and white. Use the Multi Selector to find the area of color you'd like to select and press the AELAFL button to select it. Use the top and bottom of the multi selector to adjust the range of colors that will be shown in the final image. Then you can rotate the main control dial to select up to two additional colors in the same way. When you've selected the colors you'd like to be visible in the image, press OK to save a copy to the memory card. The side by side comparison option will allow you to view the original image side by side with the edited copies. If you've created multiple edited copies, you can use the multi-selector to highlight the image on the right and then use the top and bottom of the multi-selector to scroll through the edited copies. Let's discuss the focus modes that are available on the DF. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. The Nikon DF has a sophisticated autofocus system with a variety of autofocus modes and areas that when used well together will help you get great focus regardless of what type of subject you're photographing. Understanding how all of the modes and areas work together might seem a little confusing but in this chapter of the guide we'll help you know when to use each autofocus mode as well as each autofocus area mode. Let's discuss the camera's two autofocus modes, Single Servo AF and Continuous Servo AF. To choose an autofocus mode on the DF, press and hold the AF mode button and rotate the main command dial. The AF mode that is selected is shown on the information display. AFS, or Single Servo AF, is intended for use with stationary subjects. In this mode, the focus is locked when the shutter button is pressed halfway. This would be a good mode to choose if you're photographing products or doing portrait work with an older child or adult. AFC or Continuous Servo Autofocus is the mode that you'll want to choose for photographing moving subjects. In this mode, the camera will focus continually while the shutter button is pressed halfway. This mode is great if you're photographing a sporting event, small children or animals. Before we begin discussing the autofocus area modes, Please note that autofocus modes and autofocus area modes are different settings but function together. Understanding how they work together will help your images have great focus. There are four basic autofocus area modes, single point AF, dynamic area AF, 3D tracking, and auto area AF. To choose the AF area mode, press and hold the AF mode button while rotating the sub command dial. The AF area mode will be displayed on the information display. The first autofocus area mode is single point AF. In this autofocus area mode, you will manually select the exact focus point you'd like the camera to use for focus. This autofocus area mode is great for stationary subjects. Once you have selected single point AF for the autofocus area mode, it's easy to select the focus point using the camera's multi-selector. You can see the focus point that is selected in both the viewfinder and the information display on the LCD monitor. The camera will focus on the subject that is in the selected focus point. If you want to quickly set the focus point back on the center point, simply press the OK button. The next autofocus area mode is Dynamic Area AF. This mode is available only in the camera's continuous servo AF focus mode. When you're using this mode, the initial focus point is selected manually, just like the single point AF mode. 
In the dynamic mode, the areas or focus points surrounding the one that you select will be used as backup. This means that if the subject briefly leaves the selected point, the camera will focus based on the information from the surrounding points. The dynamic area AF mode is great for subjects that generally move in one direction within the frame. In dynamic area AF, you can choose from 9, 21, or 39 point. You'll want to choose the number of dynamic area AF points based on the predictability of the moving subject. The more predictable the subject is, the less AF points you'll need. For subjects that are somewhat predictable in their movement, you could use the 9 point dynamic area AF. And for subjects that are not at all predictable, you'd want to use the 39 point dynamic area AF. Dynamic area is not available in the AFS focus mode. With 3D tracking, focus can be maintained for subjects that move quickly not only side to side, but also forward and backward within the frame. Examples of these subjects would be figure skaters or rodeo participants. 3D tracking is not available in the camera's single servo AF mode. In auto area AF, the camera will automatically find the subject and choose the appropriate focus point or points to use. This autofocus area mode is available for both autofocus modes. Auto area AF is great for snapshots or for situations when you don't have time to select the focus point manually. However, keep in mind that in the auto area AF mode, the camera may occasionally choose to focus on a subject other than what you had intended. Now that we've discussed the camera's autofocus modes and autofocus area modes separately, let's talk about how all of the autofocus functions could work together in specific shooting scenarios. Let's first use a sporting event, a football game for an example. Subjects in this type of scenario will be in motion, so you'll want to select the AFC or Continuous Servo AF mode. If Single Servo AF was chosen, the camera would not continue to focus on the subject as the shutter release button was pressed halfway down. After the autofocus mode is set to AFC, either Dynamic Area or 3D Tracking would be a good choice for the autofocus area mode. The speed and predictability of the subjects would determine whether dynamic area or 3D tracking would be the better choice. If the action is somewhat predictable and the motion is generally from side to side, using dynamic area AF would get good results. If the action is more erratic and the motion is not only side to side but forward and backward as well, 3D tracking would be a good option. So when you're at a sporting event like a football game, you probably want to choose continuous servo AF for your focus mode and depending on the level of action in the game, either dynamic area or 3D tracking for the AF area mode. Now let's discuss a portrait scenario. Assuming that you're photographing an older child or adult, the subject will be stationary, so a good AF mode would be single servo AF. For the autofocus area mode, you would choose the auto area AF or single point AF. For older subjects with less motion, the single point AF would be the best way to assure focus was exactly where you intended it. But if the subject was a younger child, there may not be time to select the individual focus point, so the auto servo AF might be a better option. If you're doing portrait work for older children and adults, using single servo AF combined with single point AF will give you the most accurate results. The last of the focusing modes is the Manual Focus or MF mode. To use Manual Focus, switch the Focus Mode selector to MF and then simply rotate the focus ring on the lens until the scene is in sharp focus. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open. This exposes the image sensor while the camera is moving and results in blurry images. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effect of camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. 
If the focal length on your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might get by using a shutter speed as slow as 1 30th of a second. a look at each of the items in the playback menu. First, there is the delete option. Here, you can choose to delete a selected group of images, delete images by the date they were taken, or you can delete all of the images. The next playback menu item is the playback folder. Here, you can select which folder of images you'd like to be viewed in the playback mode. The next option is hide image. With this option, you can select images that you'd like to only be viewed through the camera's hide image menu. Images that you select with this option cannot be deleted or played back. The next option is the playback display options folder. This is where you can choose which playback display options you'd like to be enabled. Under basic photo info, you can select whether or not you'd like to have the focus point that was used shown in image playback. Under additional photo info, you can choose to enable or disable the image only option, blinking highlights, RGB histogram, the shooting data, and the overview playback displays. Image review will allow you to choose whether or not you'd like the image to be displayed on the LCD immediately after it is taken. After delete allows you to select how you'd like the camera to display images in the playback after you have deleted an image. You can choose from three different options. With rotate tall, you can choose to have images that were taken with a vertical orientation automatically rotate for viewing in the playback screen. The next option is the slideshow, where you can create a slideshow of the images for playback on the camera's LCD or television when the camera is connected with a compatible cable. The DPOF print order option will allow you to choose the order that images are printed directly from the camera when you're using a compatible printer. The next menu is the shooting menu. The first option is shooting menu bank, which will allow you to store up to four different banks of settings. This is a great way to have fast access to your most frequently used settings. Next, there are the storage folder and file naming options, which will allow you to select the folder where your files are saved, as well as the naming structure and file name prefix for your files. The next three options are the image quality, size, and area. Next, there is JPEG compression which allows you to choose whether image quality or file size is a priority when recording JPEG images. The next option, NEF RAW recording, will allow you to choose the compression and the bit depth for NEF image files. The next two options are white balance and set picture control, which will allow you to choose the white balance and picture control settings. Manage Picture Control will allow you to adjust, edit, and save custom picture controls. Next, there is the color space option. Your camera has two color space options. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode, as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode, as this mode has a wider range of colors, making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The active delighting option is next. Active delighting helps preserve highlight and shadow areas, making images look more natural. Overall, active delighting is a great way to improve your photos in camera. The next option is HDR, or high dynamic range. When enabled, the camera will capture two images at different exposures and then combine them to create an image with a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. 
you can select a variation of exposure between the images as well as the level of smoothing. Next, there is vignette control, which will reduce the vignetting effect that is caused by certain lenses. Next, there is auto distortion control option. When enabled, this option will automatically correct the distortion that is caused by certain lenses. The next two options, long exposure noise reduction and high ISO noise reduction, will allow you to enable noise reduction for long exposures as well as set the level of noise reduction for images taken at high ISO settings. Auto ISO sensitivity control is where you can make adjustments to the auto ISO controls. With the multiple exposure option, you can set up the camera to take multiple exposure photos. You can set the mode, number of shots, and the auto gain. Next, there is the interval timer shooting option. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset time intervals, which can be minutes or hours. The next menu is the custom setting menu, where you can access a variety of settings for autofocus, metering and exposure, timers, AE lock, shooting display, bracketing flash, and controls. Each of the menu items in the custom setting menu are discussed at length in QuickPro's Beyond the Basics guide for the Nikon DF. The next menu is the setup menu. The format memory card option is first, followed by the monitor brightness option. Monitor brightness will allow you to adjust the brightness of the monitor. Next, there is the auto information display. When enabled, auto information display will automatically activate the information display when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The clean image sensor option allows you to choose at what times you'd like the image sensor to be cleaned. Next, there is the lock mirror up for cleaning option. Note that the battery must be fully charged to use this option. Image dust off reference photo is next. With this option, you can take a photo to be used in conjunction with Nikon's Capture NX2 software to remove dust spots automatically from photos when post-processing. The flicker reduction option is used when you're using live view under fluorescent or mercury vapor lights. You'll want the setting to match the local AC power supply. The next options allow you to set the time and date and the language for the menu systems and displays. Next, there is auto image rotation. When enabled, auto image rotation will automatically rotate vertical images for easier playback. Image comment will allow you to input a comment up to 36 characters on an image. The next option will allow you to enter your copyright information to be saved in the metadata for your images. The save load settings option will allow you to share data between DF cameras. Next, there is the virtual horizon. This option will help you determine whether or not the camera is level in both the left and right and forward backward directions. Non-CPU lens data will allow you to enter information about a non-CPU lens to enable a variety of CPU functions. The next option is AF fine-tune, which will allow you to fine-tune focus for specific lenses. Next, there is HDMI, which will allow you to choose the resolution to be used when your camera is connected to an HD television. Location data will allow you to set up the camera to use an optional GPS unit. Assign remote function button will allow you to choose the role of the function button on an optional remote control. Next, there is wireless mobile adapter, which will allow you to set up the camera to establish wireless connections when the optional wireless mobile adapter is attached to the camera. The last menu item in the setup menu is firmware version which will display the firmware version that is currently in use. The next menu is the Retouch menu. Each of these menu items are discussed in detail in Chapter 5. The final menu is Recent Settings, which will display the most recently accessed menu items. Let's discuss white balance. It's important to understand that the quality of your pictures 
is affected by the color of the surrounding light and how the camera's electronics process that light. Compensating for varying light conditions is referred to as setting the white balance. Most light looks white to the human eye, but it can be composed of a range of different colors. The color of sunlight is different in daylight, in the shade, or in cloudy conditions. Daylight, for example, is fairly blue and fluorescent light is fairly green. Proper camera white balance is determined by the color temperature of a light source, which refers to the relative warmth or coolness of white light. Incorrect white balance can create unattractive blue, orange, or even green colors in your photos. The white balance scale is expressed in measurements of Kelvin. The higher color temperatures measured in the area of 7500 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin represent situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have a greater amount of blue tones and a lesser amount of red tones. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3500 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce greater amounts of red tones and lesser amounts of blue tones. Setting your white balance will help your pictures have the proper coloring. If natural looking colors cannot be obtained with auto white balance, you can select one of the other white balance settings to suit the respective light source. There are two ways that you can select a white balance setting. First, you can press and hold the white balance button while rotating the main command dial and watch the settings on the information display. The other way to select the white balance setting is through the menu system. Enter the shooting menu and select white balance. The first option is auto white balance. With this setting, the camera will attempt to automatically adjust the color temperature. The auto white balance setting has two different options, normal and keep warm lighting colors. The next white balance setting is incandescent. This is a good setting to use when taking pictures under common light bulbs. It reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The fluorescent light setting is great for taking pictures under fluorescent lighting. With the DF, you can choose one of seven different fluorescent white balance options, depending on the type of fluorescent light you're shooting under. The next white balance setting is direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is a great setting for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. The next setting is the flash setting. Use this setting when you're using an external flash unit. The next setting is cloudy. Use this setting when you're taking pictures on days that are overcast. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in a picture. You can fine tune any of these white balance settings to make them more warm toned or cool toned, depending on your lighting conditions. To fine tune, select any white balance setting other than K or PRE. Now simply press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial you will see settings for values A1 through 6 and B1 through 6. The A settings will increase the amber or warm tones in the image and the B settings will increase the blue or cool tones in the image. The higher the number value, the more amber or blue tones will be added to the image. So the A1 setting will slightly increase the amber tones and the A6 setting will more dramatically increase the amber tones. The next white balance setting is Choose Color Temperature, and it's marked with a K icon. Use this setting when you know the color temperature of the lighting that you're shooting under. You can choose the color temperature in the menu system or by pressing and holding the white balance button while rotating the sub command dial and watching the information display. The last icon is the Preset Manual or Custom White Balance option. Use this setting when you want to manually set the white balance for a specific light source for the best accuracy. There are two ways to set a preset manual white balance. The first method is the direct measurement method, and it's done by taking a picture of a white card or object for the camera's electronics to reference. You can use a commercially available white card or an object like a shirt or a piece of paper to achieve good results. To set a preset manual white balance, select PRE on the information display using the white balance button and the main command dial. With the DF, you can store up to four values for preset manual white balance settings. 
To select one of the preset manual settings, press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub-command dial. There are options D1 through D4. Select the preset number you'd like to save the white balance reading to. Then, press and hold the white balance button until PRE starts blinking on the control panel. Now, fill the viewfinder with the white or gray object and take a picture. If the white balance measurement was successful, GD will flash in the viewfinder and good will show on the control panel. Otherwise, a flashing no GD will appear and you'll need to take the picture again. To select one of the previously saved presets, make sure that the white balance setting is set to preset and press and hold the white balance button while rotating the sub-command dial to make your selection. The other method for setting a preset manual white balance is the copy from existing photograph method. And it's done by selecting an existing image on the memory card for the camera to copy the white balance data from. To set a preset manual white balance from the photo on the memory card, first make sure that the white balance is set to PRE and then navigate to the white balance option in the shooting menu. Scroll to preset manual and press the right side of the multi-selector. Here, select the preset you'd like to save the white balance data to and then press the zoom out button. Options for the preset you selected will be shown. Scroll to Select Image and press the right side of the multi-selector. If the camera prompts you with an overwrite warning, select Yes and press OK. The previous custom white balance setting will be deleted and replaced with the new setting. Now you can choose the image you'd like the camera to use for the white balance. When you're finished, simply press OK. In addition to white balance, there are two other features on your DF that can improve the quality of your pictures. Picture controls and active D-lighting. Let's talk about the picture controls. This feature will allow you to customize the look of your images. There are six picture controls including standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, and landscape. The picture controls on the DF are easily accessed on the information display. Press the I button and use the multi-selector to select the picture control option. The standard picture control is the default setting and it offers standard processing and balanced results. This is a good picture control for general situations. The neutral picture control is a good setting to choose if you wish to process your images with your computer. Colors in this picture control are natural and subdued. The Vivid Picture Control is great for images with primary colors that you'd like emphasized. The Monochrome Picture Control is useful when you would like to take black and white photographs. Note, images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. The Portrait Picture Control is great for portraits. It offers pleasant skin tones and textures. The Landscape Picture Control is good for taking pictures of scenery or cities outdoors. Let's modify a picture control. First, we'll select a picture control to modify. We'll choose Vivid. To make the color on the Vivid picture control a little more saturated, select Saturation and use the multi-selector to choose a value toward the plus side of the scale. Press OK to save changes. Picture controls that have been modified are shown with an asterisk in the picture control menu. The DF also has a feature called Active D-Lighting. When enabled, this feature will preserve detail in the shadow and highlight areas of images with high contrast. This feature is most effective when it's used with matrix metering mode. To use active D-lighting, press the I button and scroll to active D-lighting and press OK. Here you can choose from auto, extra high, high, normal, low, and off. Note that with the higher settings, more digital noise may be introduced into the shadow areas of your image. We hope that you've enjoyed learning more about your Nikon DF. We know that this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.